Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, the um, great big little stitchery spot round four will be starting very soon on the 1st of October. Um, we've already started looking for our swapsters. If you would like to join in, you'll need to go to the Arty Farty Annie group on Facebook and or the Arty Fartists Discord community they're all free to join very easy to join we're a lovely friendly bunch all sorts going on in there all the time so they're they're great places to be anyway but if you want to join the swap that's what you need to do i've put together this little guide this little information sheet you can download that from the stitchery swap room in discord or from the it's pinned to the featured posts at the top of the facebook group as well and you'll also find there a link to my video explaining all about the swap and how it works so i won't go on about that now because i don't want this video to get too long the chances are if you're looking at this you already know all about the swap and you just want to um get some ideas for how to start working on your tags so the optional theme for this swap this time around um was the word celebrate and the optional twist because normally we do squares like this i'll show you better in a minute previously we've done um, four inch squares this time i've suggested an optional twist which is to make tags instead there was a little bit of confusion around exactly what that meant so i'm going to clarify all that again now and just show you a couple of ideas for how you might do your tags there are so many different ways you could do it um, and also perhaps some ideas for how you might interpret the word to celebrate or you can just carry on and do squares again and you can ignore the theme altogether i would say just check when you've when you connect with your your swapsters which is what we call the people that we swap our little pieces of stitchery with um back and forth um i would suggest just discuss it with them if, if you're not sure you can do it if you like there's no spot police you know and all i'm doing is uh sharing the idea coming up with the prompts and then providing a, a forum where you can find your swapsters and post pictures of your beautiful swaps when they come in so let's go straight to my desk without further waffle and crack on my friend tori of cool kooky creatures is also putting a, a video together with how she's starting her tags and so i will link that link to that in the description box below this video i will also put my link tree and if you go to my link tree you'll find links to the facebook group and the discord community and also my email you can always email me as well let's just have a look at these these are the sizes so this is the square that we've done previously and as i say you're very welcome to carry on and do squares again i would just 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 agree with your with your swapsters what you're going to do some people agree themes and colors and all sorts of, of things some people just happy to get a surprise you know it's it's up to you how you do it and um, these are a couple of squares i made before i will link to let me jot it down because i will forget i did do a video showing how i put these simple squares together i say simple i know it looks like there's a lot going on there but actually they're just simple this one was all strips laid across scraps of fabric and ribbon and things just laid across like that and then some decorative stitching added into them it's quite a quick and easy one to do and easy to repeat if you're making a lot and this one was just random patches i think i put yeah i put a piece of felt on the back of this one again with just very simple hand stitching over the top please don't get bogged down thinking they need to be perfect or you need to be a brilliant embroiderer you don't it's slow stitching it's meant to be fun and relaxing the swap starts on the 1st of october please don't send your squares out till then because it, it makes people panic if they see squares arriving before they've even started of course you're welcome to go ahead and start stitching now if you want to as i say there's no swap police but um yeah if people start receiving them before the swap even starts it gets a bit it can induce a state of panic in the group <laughs> And there will always be people like me that will be posting up to the last minute. Oh, hang on, I'm back up here now, wasn't it? I will say now that the I think I've got 25 swaps on my list now, and that's that's got to be it for the time being, at least. I warn you now that if you're one of my swaps, there's chances are you won't be getting your tag from me until into January because the deadline for posting not the deadline for it to reach your swapsters by the deadline for posting isn't until the 31st of December, so you've got ages. I won't even i'm going to do this video today but i'm not going to start my stitching proper until the first of october and then when they're ready they'll get sent out i will do them in time for the deadline but 
it might, I might be right up against it. <laughs> I warn you now. But the idea, it is called slow stitching for a reason. It's not a race. Um, you enjoy the process however you want to enjoy it. If you're one of those people that loves to get organised and you want to start now and and crack on and get them done really quickly, that's like, if that's how you enjoy it, that's absolutely fine. But not everyone's the same. So we will need to be a bit patient with each other sometimes. Anyway, I've, I've sidetracked myself now. I said I wouldn't do that, but I always do. Right. Um, so yeah, those were squares that I've done previously. And I will link to the video where I showed how to do that. You'll see that. It's 10 by 10 or, or 4 by 4, 10 by 10 centimetres, 4 by 4 inches square. But you'll see that what I've done is leave a margin all around. And that was because I actually tacked that, <laughs> tacked it at the, um, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, at 10 centimetre mark. That was because some people were stitching all the squares they received into together to create little quilts or they were wanting to mount, mount them. Or whatever i just put mine in a book stitched them across so that i could flatten them up because i always like to see the back the messy back sides <laughs> i had to think about it and also because some people write or stitch their names on the back as well so that's what i chose to do so that's the squares the tags should be two by four inches or ten by five centimeters they can just be rectangular like this or they can be shaped there was some confusion in the group just a few days ago um, where some people had interpreted it as using a card tag and um, attaching a little piece of stitchery to it. Now, personally, I don't see any reason why you can't do that if that's what you want to do. I'd be thrilled to bits to receive that from any of my swapsters. So I'm very happy with that. If you're in any doubt at all, just make that clear with your with your particular swapsters. I think most people are going to do what I had in mind um, which is to make them completely out of fabric and that's what I'm going to show today but if you want to take a ready-made card tag you know the ones with the shapes at the top and the hole punched through and attach a little piece of stitching to them a bit like Anne Brooke textile artist did in her 52 tags project that's where I caused the confusion I linked to that because it was the same size as we're doing and I just thought it would be a good place to get lots of ideas. I didn't mean it had to be done in the same way that Anne Brooke did it. Just to clarify that. <laughs> so, as I say, you can just make it straight like this. Um, you could shape it by cutting the corners off. What I would do if I was going to do that is, I, in fact, I, I could just do it. So I'll just do it. What I tend to do if I'm going to do that is I'll cut one corner And then to make sure it is symmetrical, <laughs> I'll flip that corner that I've cut off over and use that as my guide. It may be that you have a tag you can draw around to use as your template or that you've got a die cutting machine or whatever. You do it whichever way you want to. So that still doesn't look completely perfectly symmetrical to me, but I don't think that's gonna, it's not going to matter. <laughs> I hope it doesn't matter to my swapsters either. So you could do that. You could also take something circular that fits the shape and and uh, do a rounded top instead. That could be quite fun. One thing you do need to bear in mind with the tags is um, I imagine that most people will want to find a way to display or you know keep them in, in a nice way. And I think with the tags you need to allow for them being this way up because chances are people will hang them that way. Some people are talking about maybe hanging them on a tree, a Christmas tree or one of those white branch trees. Um, you could hang them on a, on a long length of ribbon and make a little mini banner with them. I might clip mine together just with a book ring to make a little mini book or I might make a book that's got pockets in that I can put my tags into and any cards and notes that come with them. So just bear that in mind. I would say if there's a right way up to your design that you're going to do, make it that way rather than this way. Up to you. I'm not I'm not trying to tell anybody how to do anything. I'm just sort of giving some ideas and pointers really. The other thing you need to bear in mind is there does need to be a way to hang it and there are various ways you could do that. You can punch a hole if you've got a cropper doll, you could set an eyelet in. You could sandwich a little loop of ribbon between 
um, the layers of fabric. Um, I'm going to sneeze. I can feel a sneeze coming. There it goes. Oh, that's a relief. Um, you could also make a little buttonhole or eyelet. You could actually put a loop of ribbon kind of over the top like this. You could even put a little brad through there or an actual button on. There are so many different ways. I think there will be as many ways of doing tags as there are stitches out there. One thing to bear in mind, talking about buttons is my up to you but my advice would be bearing in mind the cost of postage don't let them get too thick i would keep them under five millimeters half a centimeter in the uk certainly that is the cutoff point if it's more than five millimeters it becomes large letter if you can keep it under five millimeters it will just go as a normal letter i would advise you don't put anything else in there there's absolutely no need to if you just pop your tag inside a card, I'd just get, you know, um, whether you whether you make your own cards or you, or you buy cards or, or whatever you want to do, just pop it inside your card, write a little note and just put it in a plain envelope. I do sort of go on about that a little bit more in the in the proper intro video, which I'll, I'll link to. But um, that way you can keep your cost of postage down, especially if you're doing a lot and especially if they're going overseas. And it's also less likely, you're less likely to get hold ups. Um, with things going through customs if you put lots of extra bits in occasionally apparently it never happened to me but I saw a couple of people mention in the group that they'd ended up being lumbered with customs fees because there are extra things in the in, in the package it's so lovely to send people those extra things and I got some really beautiful goodies and I never had a problem at all but just bear it in mind so I would say there's no obligation to send anything else. You just you know, make your little stitched tag or square, whichever you're doing, pop it inside your card, put it in a plain envelope, and you should be all right to send that as a as you would a letter. Um, if you're sending overseas, I know I had to write, I had to put it down as card only. And I think the ladies in Australia were advised to put, to actually write card only on the envelope. I think if you start saying things like, fabric and things then it ends up having to go as a package and it can get quite expensive so just bear all of that in mind I thought I'd mention that while we we're at it so I have just been in to my scrap scrap stash and grabbed a handful of colorful scraps in amongst my scraps was this piece of denim I think this is from an old skirt you can see I've been experimenting here there's a <laughs> there's a heat transfer image on there <laughs> but you're not going to see that so it's fine I can I can reuse this so I'm going to use this as my background there are different ways I think um again you you know everybody will will find different ways of doing this but essentially I'm going to be using a background piece to stitch my 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 scraps onto and then I'm going to use a backing piece as well and I could put some wadding in between but I'm just trying to be mindful of that of the thickness so I've got this that I'm going to cut to my tag shape and um, apply my pieces to and then you need something to go on the back because with with the squares we didn't have to worry we just said don't worry about the back don't worry about finishing just leave a bit of a seam allowance and and leave the backs as is with the tags because they're going to be hung up you're going to see the backs as well so you do need to finish the back but the back could just be a coordinating piece of print fabric it could be a plain piece of calico you could um embroider your name or the person's name on it you could just um i thought about maybe just putting a heart and a kiss on it so it looks like a gift tag <laughs> you know um depends on how much time you, you've got how much you know what you want to do really i'm going to use this i happen to have some of this sparkly stuff which i thought would be fun i'm going to kind of be inspired by the the word celebrate but i think there are lots of different ways to interpret it sparkly things are always feel a bit celebratory to me so i'm going to be fairly vague it's a vague interpretation of the prompt today so if you think i'm coming back up again so i feel like i want to talk to you <laughs> so the word celebrate you can totally ignore the theme if you want to it's only optional but there are lots of different ways you can interpret it um the swap finishes on the 31st of october so that's that's the deadline 
so obviously that fits nicely with Christmas and New Year there's also Hanukkah and there's um, Diwali there's all kinds of there's all kinds of different celebrations you could pick your favorite holiday or celebration day in the year um, you could if you're here in the UK you could pick uh, bonfire night Guy Fawkes night if you're in America you could pick the 4th of July you know pick pick whatever if, if you're in Belize September's a humdinger month <laughs> you could do a carnival tag <laughs> so you could yeah just do something inspired by your favorite celebration or you could choose to um be inspired by something that you personally want to celebrate an, um, an achievement of yours say um say you want to celebrate that your your grandson has graduated from university this year <laughs> you, could do a, you could do a mortarboard that's a bit kind of you know stretching it a bit maybe but there's all kinds of ways um that you could do it you could um celebrate a friendship just just put a heart on each of your tags to symbolize friendship because that's what you want to celebrate do you see what i mean it's kind of yeah it's open to all kinds of interpretations one of the things i thought i i might go for would be to think of certain um items that symbolize celebration for me so lights is one fireworks cupcakes flowers bunting or uh, what do you call it in ba banners you know when you get the, tr the banners on a oh, like flags on a on a on a string we call them bunting here i think do you call them banners in the states i'm not sure but yeah that would be a lovely thing to do on a tag in fact i'm, I'm thinking about that now i've said that i could do that today fairy lights would be quite fun to do i have um some of my swapsters have indicated certain preferences or things that that they might like so i'm gonna um make specific tags for them which would be quite nice because it keeps it interesting so yeah there's all sorts of different ways and i'm i'm really i'm very excited to see all the things people come up with but of course you know absolutely no obligation to follow the theme at all last time the theme i gave was windows and uh, i really loved some of the ideas people did for windows it was really good but there were lots that didn't do it and it's absolutely fine so let's go back to the desk now i thought for this first one like as I put my hand into, I literally put my hand into a scrap bag and pulled out scraps. I thought, aha, I was getting a few bits like this. So this, this came up. This came out of one of those bougie bags from uh, Megan Crook. This I've had knocking around for a while. And this, there's some of these, see some of these sparkly things came up. And I love this. Colours do strange things on my camera, but this is really pretty. It changes blue to gold in the light. And this is like a yeah this is more of a, a kind of magenta color than it looks there dark things and sparkly things do strange things on my camera and then um at the same time this popped out and i'm thinking oh sparkly things magpies uh sparkly things celebration magpie and there were some words here where's the other word one i found another here we go i love this nice threads <laughs> so i'm kind of i think i'm just going to make a bright leery colorful sparkly one with this magpie framed in the middle <laughs> that's what i've got in my head so i might do that and then maybe i'll do one other tag because i just wanted to show two different ways of, of attaching a loop i'll use pretty much the same method but I'll create something um, that symbolizes celebration. I think one thing that would be the bunting would be an idea. Or I'm also thinking a pile of presents would be quite good, wouldn't it? Because that could be that would fit any kind of celebration. Because I know not everyone celebrates Christmas, do they? And, but yeah, I could cut some of these colourful prints up into like present shapes and leave the denim background showing that could be quite nice as well it'd be a really different look i do like to include different textures so i've got a little bit this this came out of a megan quick one as well lovely look i love this piece um you know and the difference in texture between those two i really enjoy love these little batik pieces so this this is a good time making a tiny thing like this this little tag this size is a great opportunity to use up those really really tiny scraps you know 
<laughs> that totally isn't isn't symmetrical is it i made a rubbish job of that <laughs> but hopefully hopefully you got the idea <laughs> there are also different ways to finish the edges so i could just leave the edges raw and um, leave like an interesting fringy edge like this which i really enjoy i could stitch the backing piece and my front my decorative piece face to face stitch them all around leaving an opening turn them through so I've got completely enclosed seamed edges or I could stitch the layers together and then do a blanket stitch all around to finish the edge <clears throat> there are lots of different ways you could do it maybe I'll do the one with the presents I'll do by stitching them together and, and making tidy edges and the magpie one I'll leave it more sort of I'll put them together right way up and blanket stitch the edge or leave the edges rough and ready depending on, on how it looks at the time I've got some different options for ribbons to use as well and I've also got this reel of twine I think the twine one might look nice with the magpie but you could also do like um, I've seen people put thread um, pretty fibres interesting like um, fibres through or um, a little bundle of, of lace can look really pretty to attach to the top of a tag so you know there's all sorts of different things you can do I bet we're going to see some amazing stuff with these right so what I'm going to do now is stop recording cut this um, cut these pieces up ready and then I'll come back and show you what I'm doing otherwise you're going to be here all day and nobody nobody wants that right I've started um, laying out my tags didn't go quite the way I was expecting but that's fine <laughs> Um, I, in the end it was just too, I couldn't I, I, you can you can never fit as much as you think you're going to hard can you you can't always include everything I don't think I've got room to put these and I'm also a little bit concerned that it will bulk out the whole thing too much and like I said earlier on you need to try and keep the bulk down so what I might do save that that will live to fight another day and when I've stitched all the pieces on here and I'm doing my decorative stitching I can add in a few sequence or something to give it to give the sparkle idea and um, I could also create a little um charm or something to hang off the tag that that looks like the kind of shiny things that a magpie might pick up so they're just laid out loosely on top of my tag shape at the moment I've cut three different tag shapes this one is this shape this is the piece that will go on the back to finish it off so I won't stitch through this yet I'll put that to one side my first step will be to just roughly tack these pieces on so I can start and then trim trim around the, the shape and start a bit of decorative stitching. I'm going to keep it really simple so I can finish this video today. This one, I've done a different shape. I thought I'd try the rounded shape. So I might do that one with a with an eyelet punch through with, with, with my cropper darn. Maybe I'll do a buttonhole on this one. I don't know. It depends how much time I've got. So I need to take my backing off of there. And then this one is, is meant to look like a pile of presents. And for this, I'm going to leave the background the, the denim colour. Um, hopefully it'll look a little bit more like a pile of presents once I've done my stitching on it. I will stitch all around and I'll stitch some lines across to look like the string that you tie the parcels up with i could even if i can find it i could put a little bow on the top or something and i'm going to try three different ways of attaching the ribbons so i can show some different ideas this one these i've cut i've now <laughs> i've now made my my tag template with the different um the rounded top and the angled top but i've also got a full one as well um so that'll be handy for when I come to cut out a lot altogether. And I've done them on cards, so you can just easily draw around them with a friction pen or chalk marker or something. With this one, I'm going to put this one together, you know, right sides together and turn it inside out to make a really neat edge just to show the difference. So I've cut this with a seam allowance. I've not measured it. You can see how rough that is because it doesn't matter. It's going to come off any. It's not going to show anyway. So, yeah, my, my next step with all of these is to just get these roughly roughly tacked on and then I'll do some really simple I won't do any too much fancy stitching on these because I really want to get this get this video done <laughs> it's 
so I can catch up with Tori. <laughs> right, um, I've finished tacking these uh, pieces on. I've realised that if I want to get this video out in good time to to be of any use to anybody, <laughs> I haven't got time to fully work on these tags. And if I start putting the backs on, I won't be able to then do more decorative stitching on top. So I think I'm just going to sort of outline... Um, uh, what the next steps would be and kind of show you show you what I will do but I won't be completing these tags because I'm now really liking them I don't want them just to be samples that I can't send to anybody I want, I want to finish them off nicely so I can actually send them to someone because I, 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 I really love I'm really happy with all of them so I've you can see there where I've tacked really quite roughly you can see the thread and everything I could pull that out later on but I'll see how I feel it might be that by the time I've finished putting all my decorative stitching over it that, I, it that I'm fine with it I don't need to pull it out at all but at least I can see it if I, if I want to do to do that um, so the next thing is to trim this all off back in the pile for, for another tag amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how little scrappage you need to do something as small as one of these tags it really is there we go that's probably a bit too small those are a bit too small they go in the orts pile <laughs> so there we go that's the finished size of my tag and then this piece will go on the back so with this one the next part of the of the process will be to do lots of straight stitching and things over these I might do some decorative stitching around these circles I love doing that kind of thing I'll do some kind of fancy border stitch around the to, to frame the little magpie um, he's a little bit too small to thread paint but I might out yeah just I'll just outline him a bit I'll dot some sequins around I'll put some some um, feather stitching things in between the patches because I just love doing those and when I'm all done with the decorative stitching the next part of the plan would be to choose a piece of ribbon so say it was this one and this is just one of the many ways you could add a, add a, a, a loop to this and then sandwich it in between the two layers that my back my backing and my front piece like that so that would become the hanging loop or I could make a buttonhole or I might get my cropper doll out and just put an eyelet in there um, I'm going to do the decorative stitching first before I fully decide I think this would look quite nice with with this kind of um, cord as well I love this stripy cord I could even put several lengths of it or I could combine it a whole bunch of them do be careful though not to let whatever you put because it looks lovely if you put a bundle of lace or fibers through here that it looks really pretty but just be careful not to make it too fat or you are gonna potentially have to pay more postage so yeah you can see there's a, a lot of work to do on that to get it to the point where i'll be happy to send it to someone i like the colors and the layout enough that i really i want to take my time and work on this i love that this piece of um silky stuff which I think came out of a, a bizarre scrap pack. This came out of one of the Megan Crook bougie scrap packs. These are just were in my scrap stash. Yeah, <laughs> all tiny pieces, but they all yeah they all work really well in here. And I, I love I love that um, this sort of with this and and the sequence that I'm going to add. Possibly cut up. Possibly I'll make a little charm to dangle off as long as I keep it flat. Um, to me that fabric reminds me of that kind of shot of green that you get that kind of iridescent green that you get in a magpie's tail so i think that's really yeah that's really cute and i might take the time to sign this across the back and then just do a straight stitch into it so that would be that one i think that um that ribbon does look quite nice with it i'm not sure Is this one no oh this one's got the shiny oh it might be that one I don't think I can decide until I finish the stitching. <laughs> so this one, let's trim this off. 
Oh, I don't know if I even mentioned that once I'm all done and I've put this on, I would then blanket stitch around the around the edge. Did I even mention that? And I'll do the same here. Um, I think this one will probably be um, an eyelet. I'll put an eyelet in with a crocodile. Um, and I found this ribbon that I've got quite a lot of, so I might just do a couple of lengths of that through. Oh, look, it's got some pink paint on it. Oh, that's quite nice though. I'll see how it looks. I might just put two two layers of that, but I think that'll be quite nice as well. There's the back that will go on that. Again, I, I will do something just to pretty up the back a little bit, but I could just be plain really. I like the sparkle. Um, and I think with this, especially because I've, I've cut out the, the nice threads words, I think it would be quite nice to do just a little bit of thread painting into the parrot so that is going to take me time that's why I'm thinking I, I can't finish these today let's get the video done because you don't need me to tell you how to do decorative stitching and stuff um, you know everybody will be doing their own designs this video is meant to be more about how you would put the tags together so I think I will have done enough to kind of show you that now with these this little pile of presents the plan is that I will just for each for each of the little presents I'll pick a coordinating thread and I'll do like a whipped chain stitch or something just to give it a good definite outline around the present although I still like the frayed edge and then I'll take another length of thread and stitch it right across there great big stitches right across there and right across there so it looks like the string that's tying the presents together I might even tie a little bow on one of them that'd be a nice little touch I might even add a little faux gift tag on one or two of them just to add a little bit of interest um, I'm sure somewhere I have some tiny ribbon bows one of those could go on so I'll, I'll, I'll see I'm going to leave the background as the, the kind of denim type fabric it's more of a chambray actually but I might cover it with straight stitching in a in the same blue just to make it look more interesting and once all of that is done I'll be putting the backing on so with this one I'm going to do it a different way I'm going to put these face to face like that and stitch all around the um, the outline and then I'll cut the corners trim it a bit so that it, it will fold if so it will open nice and flat oh I won't stitch all the way around I'll stitch all the way around it set for the top stitch together all around three edges turn it inside out and then I'll just hand stitch that top closed but before I close it I will add in whatever ribbon I decide to go with for this so it might maybe this would be a nice one to use the cord for because it's a bit like what you might use to map the presents with I suppose it doesn't even need to be central it could be in one corner like a gift tag sometimes is oh, I'm quite like that one it might be that one yeah, so just with these little scraps I feel like I've hardly made a dent in them I've probably got enough to make I don't know at least another three tags up there I'm just thinking these two together with that bit of sparkle so I could do a length of each through that tag that would be nice yeah a little piece of little piece of lace would look nice as well that is I think all I'm going to um, cover for today because I think I just want to get this video out so it, it in, you know in good time to hopefully be, be helpful for anybody who's wanted to make a start on thinking about you know how, how they're going to do their tags for the swap because it probably will take me another couple of evenings now to to finish these but I'm really I think my my work plan I think will be to make all of my tags up to this point and um and then and that's the kind of thing I need to be able to do up here in my craft room and then in the evenings I like to do a little bit of hand stitching kind of in my lap so that's where I'll take these downstairs with my little pot of threads and maybe a few sequins <laughs> and I'll do this stitching part then I'll be up in, up in the craft room the next day putting the backs on so that's, that will be kind of my work plan and it just it does help if you're making a whole lot of things like that it does help to have a little bit of a of a process going on and I'm sure Tori is, is going to say the same as well. Tori is much more organised than me. <laughs> that is it for me for today. Let me just see if I can manage to make a pretty thumbnail here. As I say, don't feel like you've got to do it that way. You find your own way of doing it. Um, I think there are just so many ways to interpret the 
the idea of um, celebration so many different ways you could put tags together if you're in any doubt at all about what's okay just talk to your talk to your swapsters you know and um if they're anything like me they'll just go i don't mind <laughs> do it however you like the, the point is that you you get the joy of doing the stitching of making this little piece of stitchery for someone and sending it to them and then you get the joy of, of receiving in return a lovely little piece of stitchery that someone has done for you to be honest with me i don't really care what shape or size it is <laughs> so uh yeah if you want if you're one of my swapsters don't stress about it i'll be fine <laughs> Okay, anyway, on that note, I'll say my goodbyes, get this video edited, and um, it's going to go out at the same time as Tori's, so in the description box below you'll find the link to Tori's video, and whatever else it was I wrote down that I said I would link to, oh yes, the one where I showed how to make the squares, <laughs> I think I actually finished them, <laughs> and of course the link tree, so you can find your way to the Facebook group and Discord community. Thanks very much for joining me today, and I'll see you at the swap. Bye!